<laughs> okay, well, welcome. It's really nice to have you guys back. It's super fun to be with friends on Friday and friends that we see every week and friends we haven't seen for a really long time. It's just so, so good to see everybody. So today we do have our little intro subject. So for any of you that wanted to talk about curating your home, some more and curating your life we get we've got some time to do that and then whatever else is on your on your minds or on your hearts we can talk about those things today so did some of you come with some thoughts about that i don't know i've been thinking about it and i forgot that's even what we were thinking about so i just <laughs> happened to be thinking about it this week um yeah, my house has been like house for kids for so long, but I like I feel like we need to like make it more sophisticated. So I've been thinking a lot lately. I'm like, how do we make our house look a little bit more refined and a little more ref like sophisticated? And we've been watching the um, it's on PBS, the show All Creatures Great and Small, mm -hmm. and I just love their little cottages and how they're decorated and the wallpaper and all the beautiful furniture. So I'm watching that for inspiration, thinking, okay, I need to like step up my game. Feel like um, you're a grown up now and you get to have a grown up house. <laughs> yeah, and we might be, it might be time for that. <laughs> I, I read something, um, oh good, Cadence is coming because she wanted, I know she wanted to talk about this. So that's good, perfect timing, my friend. Um, Cadence, the corner you're sitting in also looks very lovely given the subject for today. So that is just so nice. That looks like a, a curated home. <clears throat> very nice. I'm just so excited about these chairs that I got off of oh. Marketplace. You can't really see this one because it's in the, I'll just show you this other one. It's the pear. It's green. It's oh, a and jack. That's so fun. Anyway. And you live where it's green, so it ought to be yes. green. Oh, it's my favorite color too. So. I love it. That's so nice. Well, I was reading something that was talking about curating. What's the difference between curating and decorating? And I thought, oh, you know, I'm curious to see what that says. And it was all of these lovely pictures of a home in a city that I don't even, I can't remember right now because I don't know how, I didn't know how to pronounce it, but a city in India and this woman and it was her home she was showing her home and she was talking about that difference and other homes that she's been in you know and that the highest compliment she, i know this is i'm talking more about the temporal kind of the temporal part of it but i feel like it brings so much more so um uh so she was talking about how it was such a compliment if someone said that her home, that she had a well curated home. And so I thought, oh, why would she feel that way? So she went on talking about anyone can decorate a home. You know, they can follow rules about decorating or follow this thing that they saw online or whatever. But if you're curating a home, it's bringing together things that you love, things that have meaning to you, things that um, I, I like set the tone of your home. So now I need to see Melissa, what did you say? Can you say that? Are you or you're driving? Is that an option for you to share that or no? If not, I'll read it, but <clears throat> no. Okay. So Melissa says, see, this is my problem is my chats behind my camera. My, Melissa said, I've always thought of planning or organizing my life or home. The word curating has such a more creative and beautiful energy to it. I love that. Yeah. That's what Caden said. I love the way you put that, Melissa. I do too. Yes, yes, yes. And so what what are some things that you think would you might bring into your home if you were looking at that if you were thinking okay I, I would like to think more about curating my home what what are the what's something I love that I would think yeah I want to bring that into my home do you have thoughts about that like does this kind of open up some possibilities for you do you think oh wow I've never really thought about that much before but I've always loved this thing or that thing. I wonder if I could bring that element into my home in some way. <clears throat> Any thoughts about that or anything else about this curating Linnell? 
Can you hear me okay with traffic? Yep. You're good. We'll All take right. you any way we get you. All right. I want to show you where I am first. Can you see where I'm at? This, no. That's that's island of Nihau over there. And I'm on the island of Hawaii in Hawaii. So my experience, my perspective during the season is that I'm not in my home and I haven't been since May. And so traveling and being in other people's homes for all this time makes me think about what home is to me without being in my home. And so this week I've been working on being more kind. I can't really control the physical material environment but I can control how I treat my children and the spirit of the home and what our family culture is so you think that curating has a lot more to do I mean is a curating is much more than just the things that are in your home <clears throat> I'd say that's what I'm learning now because if I join a conversation about curating, I've got nothing to contribute unless it's not materialistic. Right, right. I love what Melissa said here in the chat. Curating entails the experience, smell, sound, temperature. So I, I, that kind of goes with what you were saying, Linnell, of, of your, just the essence of you, wherever you are with your kids creating home, just of, of who you are. I love that. I was thinking about, because it came up this week too, this mother culture, you know, and I made a post about that in the new community about what I thought that meant or what it meant to me. And I, and I thought, okay, that is, that is another way of really, I think of talking about curating your home because mother has such an influence on the home and her, spirit her temperament her i mean everything about her influences the home and the family so yeah i think there's a lot a lot to curating a home and curating a life so what else yeah right. emily i think it has to do with what we do as well over there which has been kind of touched on but kind of i was just we have this little pillow stitch and it says the home is made of brick and stone or no sorry gotta start over the house is made of brick and stone a home is made of love alone and i so i think you know if you think of treating it as a collection of things when you go um it also brings to mind for me a museum the curator at a museum there's more things in a museum than just the the physical things they they like design the lighting so that you have a certain experience while you're there. Um, the store of the museum will change depending on the exhibit happening. Um, they'll have different events and things at the museum to bring in the exhibit to build the excitement and the knowledge for what's going to be happening there for the next few months. So I think our curating a home is is the things that are there, the food that's there, the experiences. You know, as mothers, we're in charge of the home, and so we're creating experiences for them to have. So when I think of, of my childhood home, it's not just the couch we all jumped on when mom and dad went out on their date, or the movies we watched, or the books on the shelf. It's, it's the things, well, I already said it, it's not just the couch, it's the things we did there. I love that. <clears throat> Anybody else thoughts about that? I think that is so true. It is so much about what we do there. <clears throat> I was thinking about um, how I like to get things at thrift stores that I really like, but to me, it's not it's not so much that I'm I'm um, set on that particular thing. I look at it as this could all be taken away, and that would be fine, and I could start over with that same spirit of what what I want to bring into my home that reflects the feeling I want to have in my home that like the physical stuff is just, it's just Play-Doh. It's like something I can play, play with and, and do, but it's not about that. It's about like the creating experience kind of, that's what I'm thinking. That was what was on my mind. Yeah. I like the, the um, thought of curating an experience. 
Yeah, Lindsay. Yeah, I think to follow what Caden said, like it's by putting those physical things and creating something pretty with the Play-Doh, you're just showing how much you care and respect your home. So it's just kind of like, yeah, the act of, of putting all these things in our home, even though they, the things don't matter, but that, um, that desire to like create something beautiful, like is beautiful in itself. Yeah, and I love that that's a thing that we feel inside, that we have that desire to create because that is part of who we are. And I think when we spend more time in beautiful things, that we want our surroundings, our environment to be beautiful as well. And, <clears throat> but always rem remembering, I love that that came up so early in the conversation that that we br can bring that beautifulness. <laughs> we can bring the beauty and the warmth and all of those good feelings just us, because we can take that with us when we go with our family's places. We just maybe add to it with some of these other things. One of the things I loved about that article I read about curating versus decorating. And again, I realize this is talking temporally, but I thought there was a lot of more meaning under underlying it. And it was that several of these people, it showed things that were part of their collections, things that they put out in their homes that 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 kind of said, this is me, this is my space and made it warm and inviting. There were things that they took from their parents' homes and they brought with them. Well, why did they bring them? They could have bought them from a store or someplace. These were nice places. So they obviously had money. They could have bought Dude, them. The why did they bring the thing from their home, right? I'm going to make some presents. So there's something more involved there. So anyway, Cadence, you were going to say something. Oh. Whoops. Sorry. I You're thought... fine. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh so when Linnell was talking about um taking taking home with you wherever you go uh, this reminded me of when we go on vacation or we visit at someone's house I like to bring a few things I always I always bring the books we're reading but I'll take our computer and we take libraries of hope with us and we'll take Sometimes I'll take things like a string of lights, but you know, that's not completely necessary, but I've done that before. When it was a birthday, we brought a little birthday banner with us for my, my daughter's birthday because it was going to be a, um, a family reunion. And I wanted her to still feel like she could have a special, you know, special couple days for her birthday. And just, just little details like that helped bring some of our routine or the piece of our rituals, I guess, that we do at home, I took it with us to just so that we had it with us there. So, so that's a good, that, that brings up a question for me. So what is it that we're curating? You know, what is it that we're trying to bring or help our families experience or feel or, and you, you talked a little bit about that cadence. So what is this that we're doing? Like uh, stability, I think. F familiar, familiar stability and that feeling of love and acceptance. Anybody else? I like those. Yeah, Emily. Um, my kids are um, getting really close. I've, I've got a couple, but sorry, I'm stumbling, that have already left home and they're creating their own home somewhere else. And so as I've thought about that, um, and this year I've read several books to help me, like what, I, I feel like I'm helping them to be able to leave and leave well and be able to come back. And so it, I think of it kind of as experiences they need as they go forward in their life. And um, as I look back when they were younger, um, I was doing it without realizing it because you have to start right at the beginning knowing that you're preparing these beautiful little babies to be completely independent of you. 
and to walk away and take care of themselves. And then recently in my experience, start taking care of another little human being. And so all of these things that I've been doing, reading books and, you know, making sure they have their favorite stuffed animal when we're on a car ride or making a quilt or the birthday banner Cadence was talking about, it's setting them up to be an individual, a strong, loving, caring individual. And, and that's kind of Yeah, I love that. <clears throat> I agree. And I think what you were talking about, Emily, goes well with what Linnell put in the added to the list that we've been creating and Linnell added culture and belonging. Um, so this belonging, that's huge for your family to feel like they belong somewhere. This is their place. This is their, this is the feeling, right? When you come home from vacation, it's not the house that you're coming home to, right? And sometimes we say it's our stuff, but but the stuff, it's the feelings that we get from that, right? So so is it those things that we're coming back to? You know, is when we come back from vacation, we have this, oh, I'm home. What's home? Is it these things, you know, love, stability, familiarity? acceptance, culture, belonging. Would you have more thoughts on that? What is it as mamas that we are curating, cultivating? What is it that we're providing there so that they feel, oh, this is home? Yeah, Linnell. As Emily was talking and basically sharing the cycle of life and how we need to raise a child and then watch our child raise another child made me think of our potential as human beings, our progress as individuals, and maybe it's about curating ourselves. Maybe we as mothers are focusing on ourselves so that we have something to give. And so I feel like it goes around. You can focus on the items in your home and the decoration. You can also focus on the feeling, but again, comes back full circle to who we are and how we are developing and growing. Ah, uh, yeah, I love that. And I think you're right, because we see that when it comes full circle, like Emily's talking about, and I'm experiencing as I'm watching my children raise their children. You see that, you start to see it as it comes full circle, but you're right, it's right, it's what's in our heart. It's what's in our heart cadence that's so true and we start to maybe just get an inkling of why that's so important you know if you've been in beautiful homes that are decorated beautifully <clears throat> but they don't feel like home to you has so much more to do with the heart all of this has to do with the heart why is the heart such a big deal <laughs> why all the focus on the heart and on our hearts, yeah, Linnell. I was rewatching the Belam Dream video in section six of Catch the Vision, and one of the five things that we are reminded is important is that we our growth starts from the inside out. So I do think the way our home looks is important, and I think the way we present our material things contributes to the feeling that people have. Okay. So as always, there's a balance between heart and mind. And I think if you go into a beautiful home and there's no heart, then it feels empty. But if you start with the heart and let that seep out, then it can influence the place around you. So I thought about how, if my goal is to create a Bellon home for others to come and enjoy, it will give a better first impression and it will allow them to feel something more easily if the material looks nice is clean and so that's still very important yeah that's a hard balance sometimes to figure out i know that causes a lot of moms a lot of concern and anxiety in those years when you have little ones and you're trying to figure out how to get that all done and maintain you know i think early on sometimes it's great to have a goal of just having one space somewhere it just 
you know, you can maintain. Because as women, we need our place. We need that space, that some place to go that's lovely and calm or that's filled with our things that we love. You know, it's going to be a, like somebody set up here. It's going to be a different picture for everybody. You know, it's individualized, but you're going to have that picture. Do you, any of you watch um, Pride and Prejudice? You know, when, um, Golly. When Elizabeth goes to her friend's home and her friend has her sitting room that's just her room, she got to decorate it however she wants and that's just her place to be. Just her feeling about that and just you you get such a sense of satisfaction in that moment like yes. Oh, I I want a space like that, you know. And as Cadence is sitting there in that corner that just you know, like screams that whole vibe, you know, it's just, I shouldn't say screams, I should say it whispers or it, you know, I don't know, something, but it's just lovely and has that feeling. And again, like I said, for everyone, it's going to be different. Your space that you love, you know, could be this place that's just filled with plants because that's what, you know, that's what you love and you have plants growing everywhere on every surface and, you know, I don't know whatever it is maybe and i imagine melissa in this room with looms and and yarn and and all these beautiful fabrics and things i don't know why melissa and that might not be your ideal thing but that's where i put you um anyway but we have our spaces that we just think oh you know and lindsay's air space would be perpetually fall it's like you know the very first i don't even know when you decorated probably on your birthday i don't know but lindsay is all about fall and so the moment she can put out any fall decorations, she's going to, you know, even though she lives in Bakersfield and it was 115 the other day. So she's still okay. going to do it. Right. Yes. I always wait until like September 20th. Cause it's like, that's when fall starts. But this year, my mom brought me like a whole box of fall stuff for my birthday, which is August 17th. So she brought it. I thought, well, I'm not going to put it away with the fall stuff. I might as well just like put it out. And then this is, those flowers we're going to use for our girls for the pens oh, yeah. on Monday and I had it on the table because I thought I might as well have it make it look kind of pretty until we use them for the pens but on the table and just before we started Ruby came over and put it behind me like you need flowers mom <laughs> <laughs> I love it thank you Ruby we knew it needed to be pretty but yeah yeah so this this idea of from the inside out are you is that becoming an internalized thing for you? Are you starting to see and understand how important that is? Like in any situation, if you're having, if things are just, you're finding some roadblocks, things just aren't working out, maybe go reevaluate and see if somehow you were trying to get at it from the outside in. And if you could just flip it and, and try, start again from the inside and work out. I really, I think that's a much more of a core principle than maybe we are allowing for it to be that gets in the way for so many people as they're moving forward just on this path this well educated heart mothers of influence Balaam. if you're not working from the inside out it just doesn't you you don't seem to go anywhere it just kind of stays empty and i think all these things that we're talking about are talking about inside out right the mother's heart the mother's feelings the things that you try to curate in your home just to create an environment something that your children can feel I, know. I think of all the things that you can add as you're thinking about curating an environment you know oh emily's gonna go okay enjoy enjoy your grandfather have a wonderful lunch it was good seeing you have a great trip Bye, Emily. But I was so anyway, I was thinking about this silly post that I put. So I'm just going to share parts of it because it was kind of the things I was sharing from my heart about mother culture, which, as I said, I tie these together. So so there's a book they're reading in the grandma, the, the story, the like kind of like a book club thing anyway. And so Tracy had posted some questions about mother culture. So I was thinking about that. And so I wrote down the atmosphere. I was thinking of all the words that I thought of. So the atmosphere, the tone, the rhythm, the flow, the soundtrack, the spirit of my home environment, what my husband and children and anybody else that comes into my home feel and experience when they are around me and in my home. That's what I see as mother culture. 
for me. Um, and I hope you don't mind I'm sharing this. I feel like I'm supposed to share it, so I don't know why. But anyway, I said, I'm realizing that my desire to keep learning alive and to keep it attractive, to inspire wonder, to bring beautiful and inspiring things into my life, um, completely transformed my home. I feel vulnerable. I'm not saying, look at me, you know, look at what I did. It's so great or anything. But I'm realizing after really pondering those the questions about what mother culture is that this magic happened in my life and in the lives of my children. And I didn't do any great or difficult thing, but I did make intentional choices about what I brought into my home, what I focused on learning myself. And it's been pretty incredible. And, it, and I said, it's pretty incredible when I think about it because it was such simple things and they've brought about these incredible results and blessings. And then I, um, I just mentioned that I had so much, so many insecurities because I didn't go to college. I don't have a higher degree. And I worried so much about how am I going to teach or train my children? I, I can't do that. I don't know enough to do that yet. I was able to provide a rich, happy learning environment for my children. And I learned over time that my curiosity, my learning, my joy, my wonder blessed their lives immensely. Homeschooled or not, mother sets the tone and can truly develop the atmosphere and the relationships in the home. I think I'm just now realizing the degree to which that happens. I have to add now that when I think of mother culture, for me, I do picture and love all the traditional things. Um, and so then I listed some of those things. Um, aprons, bread, cookies, gardens, cuddles and stories, pianos and music, flowers picked for mom. <laughs> Sorry. Hmm. Feathers, rocks and stick collections, family dinners, bedtime stories. We each cultivate our own things all the beautiful and yes magical things and then i was talking to marley about it later and i said i just want moms to be able to understand that um that it's not as hard as you picture it in your head or as you make it out to be it can be these simple little things they make such a difference and it is the little things and so i had put on here by small and simple things are great things brought to pass because i know that's true i believe that and know that in my heart and then i told marley i just want them to know or understand that it's not a hard thing it's a heart thing and she said lori you that's you ought to put that on there. <laughs> That's really good. So I've been I've been thinking about that. It's not a hard thing. It's a heart thing. And so much of what we do is that that when you distill it down, that's what it is. Stop thinking that it's so hard. It's not. Put your heart into it, and then it's a whole different thing. And and it, and you're you're doing that thing where you're starting from the inside out, and that pressure from the inside, your desires and your love pushes that open and then you have this incredible beautiful thing that blossoms because of it anyway those are my <laughs> my thoughts this week on mother culture and this idea of curating your home and curating your life anyway oh okay kleenex box that's another thing we need to add to this desk <laughs> lindsay um, I don't even know what I was going to say, but yeah, that, that it's the desire because I think sometimes it doesn't really matter what our homes look like or what we're doing or anything, just that like you love your children and that just flows out. Um, I remember talking to Laura one time and she went to the doctor and, um, it's one of our like beloved doctors in town and he's probably going to retire soon. He's this acupuncturist, Dr. Lou. And mm -hmm. this is what I remember from it. Maybe Laura's like, I don't remember that. But he just went, he just told her, go home and love your children. Like that will heal whatever's going on. Like you just love your children. I don't know. I've thought about that. Like if we just love our children, none of it really matters. Like it'll come from within. So as we make dinner, if we do it with love, then it's, it becomes a magical thing and not just like, here's lasagna, but like we made lasagna for dinner and that was fun and we did it together. And I don't know. I just, yeah, it, I, 
I can see more and more as I learn more about this, that it really is what's on the inside. Like it, that flows out to the outside. Like you, I'm starting to see that. Yeah, thank you. And I love that you brought up desire because that is such a huge part of it. And, and, and we think, but I, I want this so badly for my family, but I don't know, I don't know what to do or I don't know how to get there. You know what, you're like halfway there maybe three quarters of the way there because you have that desire. And there's so many people who don't, you know, they just, they haven't even figured that part out yet. And that is gonna get you so far. So just let it that go. And I think the ideas of the world and ex expectations, you know, of the world are the things that sometimes will cause you to hesitate or think, well, it can't be that simple. This couldn't possibly solve that, or this couldn't possibly, it's too, it's too simple of a thing to solve these problems or I love it. This would make me happy. So how could that be the thing that makes my life easier? Do doesn't everything I do have to be hard and <laughs> whatever for it to be accomplish something good, you know? And no, it doesn't. It can be these simple, beautiful things. And I'm not trying to like, I'm not, I don't mean to like not acknowledge the difficulties that happen in a day, you know, the squabblings, the whatever, but I can tell you from the, the place that I'm standing in, I can look back now and I can see that those things don't matter. And all the things that you can get caught up in as a mom, those all go away and your kids don't remember any of those things and the things they remember and the things they hold on to and the things they're trying to do with their families are those little things that you did <laughs> and they're doing those things and those little things are important to them and they're the ones that they realize were key to setting that tone and that's what they want to do in their own homes so you so you get to kind of see so i just i wish that was something i could gift you that kind of perspective so that you could see wow i'm doing great <laughs> you know sure we had some of these bumps though so that's to be expected of course we did but oh my goodness we've got so many of the good things in place you know anyway i would love to hear from more of you sorry i'm monopolizing a little bit So anybody else? No, you're I fine. I'm monopolizing yeah, too today. So <laughs> um, I was just thinking about how, um, like with these chairs, for example, it, you know, it's just a chair. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter, but I just love them so much and they were used and cheap and my kids are probably going to ruin them. It's fine. It's fine. It's just that, like, I, I don't even know how to describe it. If my home is pleasant, it's, it's just comfortable and pleasant for me. I feel so much better about life. And even when it gets trashed and there are, you know, tiny pieces of paper this big everywhere, it's, it's still okay because the framework feels happy to me. And yes, I do get that urge to, we've got to clean this up or I'm going to go crazy. But, you know, that's just what I was thinking. It's just like these little details can be such a blessing to us. Just even like planting something outside. I'm so excited about my, my porch from just having some plants on it. It's, it's not a huge thing and no, I don't, I could live without it, but I feel so grateful for it as a blessing that I've been, that I've received. And it just brings me so much happiness that it is a gift from God. It just, it feels like a gift from him to yeah. me and I feel loved. Anyway. Oh, I love it. I love that perspective. And it's just so sweet, Cadence. Thanks for sharing that. And I think we all need a little bit of that. I, I know I brought it up before, but in that silly, goofy movie, Overboard, I love that when um, the the main character, you know, she's got amnesia and these this family talks her into thinking, believing that she's their mom and she just has forgotten everything because they they haven't had a mom for a long time. Their place was trashed. It was just awful. And she came into this dumpy little place and just brought in some flowers and an old tablecloth from a thrift store, and, you know, and, and made it a home and made it feel so different because of her presence there. And that was kind of this magical thing that I saw, you know, years and years ago. And I thought, okay, so I don't have to be able to afford anything nice 
it's just I'm bringing some part of me here. And like Linnell has said, and also um, Lindsay was talking about that last week, that they've gone away from their homes, but they've been able to take, they still have that. So how do they have that? Well, they have mom. <laughs> so that's the key to it is you. You're the key to that. And I love that. I love that that makes a difference. Yeah, Lindsay. I think that's why I like camping so much because you take everything else away and you have a tent and like nature and that's it. You don't have anything fancy, nothing that costs anything really. I mean, your camping equipment and you're able to like create out of nothing a home in the middle of the woods. I just think that's so cool. Like you can go get, you could get a little jar and pick some wildflowers and put it in there and bring a tablecloth and it goes down to like the simple basics those little details that are done out of love they don't have to be done you can still camp without the little pretty things and the um the conveniences of like home in the woods but I don't know I, I lost my train of thought but I like that part of camping where like you just take all that other stuff away and all you have is like your home and the love and the little the little things you bring to it and set up. I love that. That paints a pretty picture too, just that idea of being able to do that. I like it. And I think it's good to acknowledge that that we enjoy things like that. What whatever your things are, whatever it is that makes your place feel like home, that that's okay and that that's actually really good to acknowledge those things and try to include those things. Bring bring that part of you to your family. You know, let that come out. Let that blossom, let you blossom because that's gonna bless your family. When you're just this, you know, you're the cook and the housekeeper and the educator and the, you know, whatever, that's, I don't know, it gets stuff done. I did that in the beginning, I think, you know, just kind of, I was, I was so worried about not getting those things done that I did an overabundance of that. And then uh, somehow I felt like I got permission to do the other and ha, ah, what a world of difference, you know? So it's a good thing. Hearts are good. <laughs> it's a good thing to um, really focus on your heart take that time to make a difference i i think it's incredible there's not there's not one success story in these mothers that that i talk to that that hasn't come from them taking time to nurture their hearts that's what happens yeah lindsay i think going back to brooke snow too and like what i was listening to yesterday and um i was just seeing a lot of the negative and i think when we focus on the negative then we start to feel negative and we start to just become negative. But if we look around our house and see the positive and just find the good, then that whole thing of like, see, say, do, feel, become, I'm sure I butchered that. But like, we can see the good despite whatever our house looks like and just talk about the good and feel the good and not worry about the things that are not perfect. All the backpacking stuff that bothers you on the other side of the room, like, it's fine. You just like focus on the good things and we'll feel better and do better and then our, I think our house actually reflects that when you focus on the good things it because it gets better like we we don't feel so weighed down yeah well I have people over now when my house you know and I haven't like you know done the full cleanup of my house I, I I'm trying to, I've got my house to a place where it's mostly maintenance you know but I can have stuff out and I don't freak out because I'm realizing that the connection is between me and you, not you and my house, you know? And so I'm starting to kind of, <laughs> anyway, I think that's a change we could make too. I think we limit relationships and connection because we, we have this idea that somehow we, we're going to wait until everything's perfect before we do that. And anyway, that's a side tangent. Well, it's so beautiful there. That's so fun to see. Oh, oh yeah. Cadence wants you to tell about the pens that, that we're making, Lindsay. Oh, nothing big. You know the pens where you just wrap the the floral tape? Yeah, there you go. And put a pen at the end. We're going to do that. But who we is this? Our... What is it? 
who who's coming over to do this? Okay, so I'm so excited. So we, <laughs> with all of our like, I know we've talked about it before, like starting a school or doing something. Um, after like so much prayer, it's changed like eight times, but it's now for young ladies like 14 and up, and we have we have eight girls right now, and they start Monday. We're gonna meet at Lori's, and do well-educated heart with them. So we're so excited. So the first day we're going to make the little pens with the flowers just as a little craft to do and um, talk about Marco Polo and storytelling. And we're going to have Chinese food because we're talking about Marco Polo. So, and Hans Christian Andersen, and we have all sorts of ideas and just kind of introduce them to this whole idea of heart education. And I'm super excited. That sounds wonderful. See where it goes from there. We're super excited and we're going to tell them stories. She mentioned that and we're going to invite them each to find a story and work on it all month. And then on the last Monday, they all, we all get to present a new story. So, and anybody that, any of the girls that let us, we're going to record them and put them on the storytelling section of the new platform. Cause I, it's just such a wonderful thing to encourage storytelling. So it's Pinehurst Academy for young ladies. And Pinehurst, my my homeschool for my kids was Pinehurst Academy. We live on Pinehurst and you know, I'm very creative. So, so it's Pinehurst Academy. We just got lucky that your street name has such a lovely name. Yeah, yeah. Yes, the young ladies are homeschooled. Well, one of them is not, is that correct? What is that? Katie, uh, are the young ladies homeschooled? Yeah. Even Katie? Katie goes yeah. to school. But no, I don't think no. so. Oh, unless okay, she does good. now. I'm super excited. I'm so excited. This will be wonderful. And Lindsay and I are wearing dresses. We're going to, you know. And a, a mom of uh, her children go to a, a little thing like this in Utah. And um, the children, they have a dress code. So I thought, oh, that might be kind of fun because it's fun to get to get dressed up and go somewhere. So we'll see. We'll we can talk to the girls about it on Monday, but I'm really excited. It'll be, we'll just see how it all goes, but we're going to make sure we always talk to them about the, that we're doing the five things that we include, you know, the music, art, poetry, storytelling, and nature, and help them to recognize that that is what they're adding into their lives every day. And then we hope that it eventually goes and then we bring boys in and either on their own or together, we're not sure. But um, Marlene's really excited about it and kind of watching to see how does this go and kind of, so we'll see, we'll see what happens. I don't know. We might just have fun and play and then it'll stop. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Lindsay, you were gonna share more? No, I just kept it unmuted in case I felt like chiming in at any time. <laughs> Good, I'm glad you did. I think the fun part is that we've just been following what we felt like we're supposed to do and it's been it's been really neat to see it unfold and and our paths directed in all sorts of different ways until we finally get to like oh this is where we're supposed to be right now yeah we think for now for today for now i know it we, might change <laughs> we have ideas on where it could go in the future but that's you know that's all just my ideas we'll see what the lord wants us to do yep so, and then you ladies can do the same thing in your areas. We'll just build it and go across the country with these lovely little pride. Wouldn't you have loved something like that? Wouldn't that be so much fun to go do with your friends? And we'll do tea parties. The girls already do them. So they'll be in charge. Two of the girls, Laura's daughters, I've already put them in charge of looking at the different countries that we're going to be studying and finding um, a recipe they want to make and then part of their because I kind of work with them with their high school stuff their assignments and so one of their assignments is then to bring a food from one of those countries or a dessert or a treat to each Monday's class so I'm just super excited oh Lindsay Sarah's doing a Japanese themed tea party this month that's so neat you know as mom so many times we think that oh we can't do that I don't have the time to do that Nobody asked you to do it. Let's let your kids do it. Yeah, go ahead, Lindsay. Yeah, it was actually because last time, uh, Laura's daughter, Madeline, she planned the whole thing 
um, she used my house and came over and did all of it. I didn't do anything. And the girls did it themselves. So she actually asked Sarah if she could host the next one. So they've already kind of asked each other to host. I haven't had anything to do with it, which is so fun to see them kind of take this on and take responsibility of it. Well, tell Sarah, I have a whole box of Japanese dishes and things from a friend of mine who lived over there for a while. So okay. she'll have to come and see if she wants to use any of them. But how yeah. fun. Now, Morgan, is it? It is Morgan, right? Morgan Taylor. And Morgan is you. Okay. Because you've been on and off, and I just love when you're here. And it's fun to see your face. So welcome back. And you know you can pop on anytime you want, but I won't I won't make you. I never really like make you make you see, but it always happens. I love it. <laughs> no, thank you so much. And um Friday afternoons are one of my favorite times because I can kind of pop in and out as as I'm able to. So I really appreciate kind of the casualness, but I always glean so many wonderful things from these meetings. So thank you, Lori. Oh, you're so sweet. I'm just happy that you're part of us and it's fun to see your face yeah. and hear your voice yeah. because we're all a big family. You know, we just, we got to, we watch out for each other and we gain that kind of support from the connection. Isn't that amazing how that happens? I love it. We need to really try to do that in our neighborhoods, you know, whatever your neighborhood is. I was trying to explain to the ladies in Utah, you know, um, the rest of the world is not the same as it is where you guys are. Do you know that? You know, they were just laughing at me. I was like, my neighborhood is way bigger than yours because I can't just say, okay, these five, you know, ladies, and then you guys take those five and you take those five. We don't have that here. So, um, and they, you know, they laugh, they know that. But anyway, it's just such a difference, right? Because because your neighborhood is, might be your whole community, but that's okay. Just bring a couple ladies along, find a couple friends that you can start talking with about these things. You can sit down and have a little conversation with them, meet them at a play date, something, something that's gonna feed your soul that's right there close by. Just, I think that's so great to, even if you're, if it's just for spreading that kind of a feeling to other people, don't leave here. Don't ever leave here. <laughs> I don't want you to do that. You can, of course, I'll give you permission to do that. But, um, but so good that idea of, um, of trying to create something nearby. I love that. I know Laura Pollock's been working on that. She has a neighbor that she's been doing Catch the Vision with, and I love that. I love that she's bringing that to another woman. Another mom has that, has now that those resources to make her heart and her home a beautiful place. Anyway, and Holly, I know we haven't really got to hear from you um, much the couple of times or the few times you've been here, but I love that you're here. So thank you for joining us again. I just love it. I always want to know who everybody is. Oh, hey. Thank you. Absolutely. It's just great to know our circle of friends is big and it varies. It's this fluid thing, you know, and friends can come and go. They can pop in when they can and they don't have to feel any pressure. I like that too. So anyway, any other thoughts as we're wrapping up today? Yeah, Linnell. It's exciting to hear your progress and to watch both of you, Lori and Lindsay, create this Pinehurst Academy, and it's inspiring. And I, <clears throat> lately in my home with my children, I've been trying to replace the phrase hurry up with something else. Because I went on a week-long trip, and just my husband and I came back home to my children, and they were saying hurry up all the time. So it was a reflection of what they're hearing. And I realized, I think I've been hurrying up my children a little bit too much, and I want to stop that. And so instead of saying, hurry up, I can tell them, put your shoes on, please. Or instead of saying, hurry up, I can say, let's go to the car, please. So we, we very often say, hurry up. But what are we meaning? And what do we want them to do? And, and where are we even hurrying to? A lot of times, I don't even have anywhere to go. I'm just impatient. And so I am practicing this myself and so every time I hear my children tell each other hurry up or my husband then I think to myself what could I say instead and I even invite them to replace the words hurry up 
So as I've been practicing this and it's been on my mind, I think about slowing down. And I am reminded of the cedars of Lebanon and how you can't speed grow a tree. We can't speed grow our children. And I think the same is true for our Mothers of Influence Circles, our academies, Well Educated Heart, Belam, anything. And so it's inspiring to see what you're doing, but sometimes I want to rush it and, and create my own center and have one tomorrow and invite girls over. But I'm reminded that it takes time and things of the heart are slow in coming. And Lindsay said that she's prayed about it eight times and I'm sure she didn't pray about it in eight minutes. It's probably been a long time that this has developed. And so I, I think I'll keep that reminder and continue to develop this slow down and instead of hurry up let's make our academy just take it easy and take it slow and replace it with whatever you need to replace it with i love that and do you i don't know if you have the same sense that i do but i one of the things i like about the word curate curate you know is i don't think it sounds like a thing that you do quickly does it? it? It sounds like something that you've invested some time and thought and, you know, and it's something you do over time. I, Cadence was doing the, you know, yes, the motion movement, you know. Uh, yeah, it's just going to be something that probably you don't you continue to do that throughout your life. You know, it's a continuing thing. So I like that that encompasses that whole slow down and be intentional. Intentional also doesn't seem like a fast hurry up kind of a thing. And doesn't that just let you breathe? Just the thought of that? I like it. I think breathing's probably good. I don't know. I like it. <clears throat> anyway, sorry. Um, I love this. I love being with you all so, so much. And it's something I look forward to. And it's something that feeds me. So thank you for being here today to have this discussion. I hope it's been something good for you. And um, there'll be other ladies that listen to it. And so for all of you that come and listen that don't get to be here with us, thank you. And I hope you feel part of this because it is it's something wonderful to be a part of, and I'm grateful that it's come into my life. So thank you all. And we will meet back again here um, next Friday and talk about something else. That'll be a blessing to our lives. And so anyway, and it'll be a lovely thing again. So thank you for making it a lovely discussion. Anybody else want to share anything at the end as we wrap up? Thanks for doing this, Lori. We appreciate you. Thank you. You're so sweet. Anybody? So we're good. Ah, Cassie. Cassie, with your babies. I've actually been working on curating a place for peace and breathing. Yes, breathing is a good thing. Hi, sweetie. Good to see you. How are you and your babies? We are all doing very well. And yes. Was just because um, when my started smoking or throwing drums, I kept thinking in my head, maybe I need to create like a peaceful place to sit and just tell them, you know, go sit in the peaceful place. And then I realized actually that's what I need. So <laughs> I designated a little corner of my own area to be just somewhere where I can look at it or be in it and just take a moment and breathe. And then of course, when I started doing it, they took interest and enjoyed it too. Yeah. That's how it all works. I love it. I love it. Eventually we'll learn, won't we? We'll learn that this is <laughs> this is how it works. Create it for mom. Mom do it. Mom model it. Oh my goodness. Hey, handsome. He's oh. hanging in the peaceful place corner that I'm working on. I just added a curtain because oh, nice. I like the light streaming through. It reminds me to take a breath. Yeah. Oh, Cassie, I love it. Thanks for sharing that and for sharing him. Hi, buddy. Hi, handsome. Oh, golly. Oh, so cute. Okay, mamas, friends, thank you. This has been so good for my heart. I hope it's been good for yours, too. And we will get together next time. Bye.